Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Retro Loogie Show. It's me, Retro. And it's me, Loogie. Uh, we're here to do the whole discussion dealio on the Nintendo Direct from today, which is the 13th of September. This video is not coming out on the 13th oh, great. of September. Now we got to record and edit in one and a half hours. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, it's currently 10.27 p.m. as of the recording of this video. Um, and I wanted to start this off with a little disclaimer uh, we're not going to talk about everything that's in the direct because there was quite a bit there and a lot of it was ports or stuff that neither of us knew about or cared about or it was like um, very much like oh like we like the trailer but we don't know any you know we, we haven't played this series before yeah um, and there's, there's nothing else for us to say except it looks interesting yeah very disappointing for all you I'm sure it would be great to have a five hour long video of, hey, this thing looks cool. Moving on. <laughs> Next thing, this thing looks spectacular. So, I wanted to start off with uh, Fire Emblem, because that's what the direct started off with. So, <laughs> logic. Um, I, don't, I don't have much to say on this game other than I think the protagonist looks like a DeviantArt OC. <laughs> Someone made a post on Twitter and said character designed by Meriwether Comics, and I lost it. Oh. Uh, no, but, I mean, I like how the <laughs> the protagonist is Joy-Con colored. That's pretty neat, I guess. <laughs> is that what they were going for with that? Maybe. I don't know. Um, it looks interesting, though, with, with this weird persona summoning thing with previous Fire Emblem characters, like Marth yeah. and probably Karam and Lucina and all that jazz. Um, villain looks pretty interesting. Um, of course, the battle style is usual Fire Emblem affair. Tactical, whatever. Um, I'm probably not going to get it when it comes out right away, because I, I have three houses and I've like, but barely played that. So, I just kind of feel like, out of principle, I should beat three houses and then buy another Fire Emblem, a Fire Emblem game. It just seems like, why why would I buy a game from, like, a, a game from the same series of, of a game that I've, like, but barely played? Yeah. That's just, like, 60 to $70 down the drain. Um, I mean, I don't really have anything else to say. The name is interesting. Fire Emblem Engage. Ooh. <laughs> Next up is Spongebob Squarepants, The Cosmic Shake. Now, I don't think L Lugie here has played um, any Spongebob game. At least yeah, not I that I remember you mentioning. I haven't grown up on those old Spongebob games like apparently every single other person has. That's right, because you've never... Oh, hold on. I don't want to blow your spot up there. I don't want to blow your spot up there, but you know what you've done wrong. You, you know, you know where you've gone wrong. No, I, I will. I will come out. Uh, I have not. I've never watched SpongeBob before. I, I know I'm, <laughs> I'm a disgrace to every other member of our generation. But uh, yeah, that's something I felt needed to be said. I feel like is there like a like a triple A for for people who haven't seen SpongeBob yet? <laughs> um. Yeah, no. Well, we'll we'll sit you down and and you'll you'll watch through SpongeBob, but not not too far. Once you get into like the mid two thousands, it starts to be like mid. Once you start getting closer to twenty twenty, like twenty sixteen, you're 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 not you're the episodes are bad, mundane, and boring. I don't know, have an aneurysm or something. Um, but what I noticed that they mentioned, which I thought was really cool, was that um, all of the characters are voiced by their original voice actors. Oh, yeah. Which is nice, because <laughs> Battle for Bikini Bottom, um, not all the voice actors were there, so Mr. Crab sounded, like, real, real strange. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I always hated when movie games did that, where they had different voice actors, because it's, it's so noticeable. It's just really distracting. Yeah, I almost, almost want to have you like when you edit this, edit this like pull up like Mr. Krabs talking and then <laughs> Mr. Krabs from Battle for Bikini Bottom. Yes, hello. I was wondering if you could play that song again. No money means no more Krusty Krab. 
No more crusty crab means no more fry cooking for you. And it's just like it's like it's like it's like if a teenager was trying to pretend to be Mr. Crab. It's so <laughs> weird. Um, but it'll be nice to know that like you know to to have Squidward sound like Squidward, Patrick sound like Patrick, yada yada yada. Um, yeah. And not have to deal with that like break of immersion because for me it, like like i was like i was like loving it i got i got the re uh, battle for beginning bottom rehydrated and i was like yeah this is so cool it's got you know so far it's all the people are voiced by their you know original people and mr crab spoke and i was like and i don't want to play this game anymore <laughs> i i kept playing but still it was it was very frustrating is it is it using the same engine that battle for bikini bottom remake did uh, it looks like it looks very very similar to that so I, I can only assume so um so next up here is splatoon 3 splatfest um which i didn't look up what the uh um oh the right theme? so the Those... theme so the theme is what would you bring to a deserted island party gear grub or fun i'm um, really mad that they didn't i don't know why they didn't call the last one games like you could have had all G's, gear, grub, and games. Like the little picture even has little like card games and stuff. I don't know why. I don't know why they didn't go with that. I feel like they do that a lot. I, I, um, there's like an example on the tip of my tongue, but I just can't like I can't you know bring it forth. But um, I gotta ask, what are you choosing? Um, I don't currently own Splatoon three, but uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't in, in theory. <laughs> In theory, if if you owned if you earn if you owned a proverbial copy of Splatoon three, which 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 uh which team? I mean, pro. It really. I, I was watching Arlo's video on the direct, and I, he said it really depends on the island, which I I agree with. Like, what what does the island have on it? Because like. If it's like an island full of fruit trees, then like you don't really have to bring food. Lugie, come on. Okay, I, I guess I'll go with grub because <laughs> like you need food to live. <laughs> Maybe I'll just like bide my time Tommy. with the food while I wait for someone to come for me, if that ever All happens. Right. <laughs> All right, so Tubbo over there chose grub. <laughs> um, I personally would choose uh, gear because if I just have a bunch of food but I don't have any tools how am I gonna like you know have more than like 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 get more food if I run out of food yeah so if I have gear then I can cut down trees and you know cultivate possibly cultivate crops if possible or hunt for fish um without having to make like makeshift caveman <laughs> homo erectus freaking <laughs> spears and stuff shoving spears this is at minecraft I can't punch the trees down next up is uh, Nintendo 64 stuff uh, I, that's, how I, that's how I have it listed it's like the you know expansion pack DLC Whatever. Um, do you? I, I don't think either of us actually have the expansion pass, do we? Uh, I don't because my dad thinks that it's a ripoff. Well, I I agree with him. I also don't have the expansion pass. I think that it's becoming. I don't know if the price is increasing when they add new things, but if it's not increasing, I think that it's slowly starting to become more and more worth it. Yeah. Because maybe. now you have like a crap ton of Nintendo 64 games. You have Octo the uh, Octo expansion to. You have an expansion for Animal Crossing. You have the expansion, the entirety of the expansion for Mario Kart, which is like adds what, like ninety something tracks or something like that, forty five tracks or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, um, I guess it's just subjective whether you think it's worth it or not. I, I would, I would be down to buy it honestly if they ever added GameCube games to the online service. Oh my god, dude, you're speaking my language. <laughs> Like that, that's what they need to do. Is that they they need to they need to start moving towards um, GameCube and Wii and DS and Game and Game Boy and like stuff stuff like that. Anyways, we're getting sidetracked. We're supposed to be talking about Nintendo yeah. sixty four. Uh, Mario Parties one, two, and three. 
cool. Yeah. <laughs> all, all the games they're adding are, like, cool. Uh, especially, I guess... No, we can, we can talk about... Uh, Goldeneye, they're, like... They finally got Goldeneye. Yeah. Like, a lot of... I heard a lot of people talking about how Goldeneye would probably never be brought to modern systems because there's three different licensing things with, like, Nintendo, Rare, and then the James Bond license. Yeah. But it, it, they it's, did it's, it. It's interesting... <laughs> It's interesting the lengths that Nintendo will go for like the things that like aren't super important. Hey, Goldeneye is very important to all the what thirty year olds out there. <laughs> However yeah. old the people that grew up with N sixty four are now. Yeah, like for me, it's kind of like cool, I guess. But then for like people who like, grew up with the N sixty four and played Goldeneye, are like, Whoop. I'm yeah, I'm glad they're like finally adding all the all these N64 games that are really important to the library, but like, I don't know why they're spreading it out so much time-wise. Like, some of them are releasing all the way down in 2023. It's like, they're, they're N64 games. Do they really need to... Why, why do we need to wait for them? We've already waited all this time. And they're I like... <laughs> I just don't... That's a really good question. <laughs> I don't. I have many, many complaints about how Nintendo handles the release of their old games, which is probably a rant for another day. Oh yeah. But I just indeed I just, rant for another day. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like literally just ROMs too. Like it's it's not even. Maybe there's like a little bit of development time to like perfect the emulator to work for that specific game, but like. You're just dumping a ROM onto your little app. It doesn't. <laughs> why does it need to take eight months to come out? Right, and and that's the thing that's really weird. <laughs> After we've already like, waited like, like five years since the launch of the Switch to play these games. Oh, yeah. I don't really. Whoa! Use my funky little yawn there. Um, <laughs> that's the thing I don't really understand. It's like, why are you running away from free money? <laughs> like people have been asking for a new F Zero game for years, so those people, if you do a good job, those people are gonna buy that F Zero game, and you're gonna earn a lot of money. But no, we need like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee because that's what the people asked for. We need we need Pokemon we need Pikmin Bloom and Pokemon Go because that's what the people asked for. Actually, we don't have it on the list, but I thought it was really funny how Miyamoto came and talked about, like, Pikmin Bloom. Like, from what I got from that was him being like, guys, please play Pikmin Bloom. <laughs> Seriously, he was trying so hard to sell it, and I'm sitting yeah. there like, can we... I felt kind of bad, honestly. Because <laughs> he, he, he's like, he talks about, he's like, oh, you know, I go to all these places and stuff, and I, I highly doubt that, that he's like... They, like, he wakes up every morning and goes, yes, let's go up with the Pikmin Bloom. Let's do it. I don't know, ma like he, maybe like, he. Like, like, I, I don't doubt that like people could thoroughly enjoy Pikmin Bloom, but like, I, don't, I think they were expecting it to be as big as a as big of a thing as Pokemon Go was, and that's just not. Th that was honestly never gonna happen. You know what's funny is that I didn't even know that it released until <laughs> like some time within the recent like month or two. <laughs> like, I had no idea it existed, and then one day I I saw it and I was like, what? This is a thing. I think yeah. this is actually like the first time that they've properly talked about it. I don't even remember seeing any like <laughs> trailers for it or like anything. Like, yeah. I don't know. I think I, I think I remember seeing a trailer a while ago, but yeah, it, it wasn't a big event release. Um. So now we can actually. This is a good leaping off point, actually, because we mentioned it earlier. The Mario Kart DLC. Um. We got. Um. Let me go here. We got uh, where is it? They showed yeah. two tracks. <laughs> there was we that Christmassy one, and then Peach Gardens from Mario Kart DS. I love Peach Gardens from Mario Kart DS. Honestly, I was like, like they did it, and it was like it was like Merry Mountain from Mario Kart Tour, and I was like, all right, this looks nice, cheerful, it makes me think of Christmas. Um, yeah. And then and then I saw Peach Gardens from Mario Kart DS, and I was like, yes, yes. Now 
let's let's add more levels for Mario Kart DS. Come on, let's go, let's go. And then it ended, and I was like, are you serious? <laughs> like the first one that popped into my into my mind was Luigi's Mansion. I was like, I was like, oh, that so the next one's gonna be Luigi's Mansion, right? Yeah, I would love that. And like as a secondary, I, like like I would go. I want I want Luigi's Mansion, and I want the airship one. That the airship really level good too. was so cool. It, it seems to me like the. Uh... The tracks are improving visually from how they started out in Wave One. Yeah. Like the the Christmas one especially, I thought that one looked really good from the footage they showed. Like it looked. A, I know. It looked a lot like the the Mount Wario course. It was so pretty. <laughs> okay. <Anyway. laughs> Mario Striker DLC, Pauline and Diddy Kong. When Ooh. I was watching the direct, I, I, I was like, I mean, it was like six in the morning, so I was kind of like angry at everything, but I was like mad with the knowledge <laughs> that Diddy Kong wasn't in the base game. <laughs> I can't really imagine like you're sitting there, you know, room's a little chilly, so you're kind of like, you're also tired, so you're like just real, just like, like, you know, if, if even your dog walked in, he might end up getting kicked out the window. <laughs> <laughs> like... And you're sitting there, and you're like, you watch this stupid freaking direct. <laughs> and then, and then it's like Diddy Kong and Pauline are coming to Mario Strikers, and you like punch a hole through your monitor. <laughs> what? Diddy Kong wasn't in the base game. Um, you know it's cool. You know, monkey. But I don't know. Pauline is like whatever. It's like it's it's cool that she's sort of a staple character in the side games now like she was in uh Mario Tennis Aces yeah and uh I was she in I've... was she in the golf one I forget the name I think so yeah yeah um it, and then she's been like Mario and Mario versus Donkey Kong for years and then she finally got her big mainline appearance in uh Mario Odyssey yeah um and then now she's in Mario Strikers. Uh, let's see. It's cool. I find it kind of interesting that they actually added her with a uh, Donkey Kong character because she comes from New oh, Donkey yeah. City, and that's all like you know Donkey. There's like a whole bunch of Donkey Kong references from like street names to store names and yeah, whatnot. I don't know. Short and sweet. Looks cool. Um, next up. We got Nintendo Switch, Nintendo Switch Sports Golf. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, it's kind of weird that they like that they're like, oh yeah, we're doing golf, but they didn't announce anything else. Like, I feel like it would make sense to be like, we're still working on golf. We need this extension. By the way, here's baseball bo or boxing or something. Yeah. So that there's I wonder, something like, like, are they even gonna add anything else? I don't know. I'm gonna be real mad if they like. I'm not, I actually like might never put Nintendo Switch Sports in my Switch again if they if they um if they don't do boxing. Yeah, that that'd be such a missed opportunity if they never ended up adding boxing. And it's not like they would have to work hard to like program that in or anything with the Joy Cons because they already did it with arms. Yeah. You have the option of fighting with your fists. We we sports we sports boxing style on arms. It's a they de they said they're delaying it right like it was originally gonna release. Yeah, it was, it was gonna release this like this fall and now it's gonna release during the holiday because they need a little extra time to work on that. And it's like <laughs> why why are you gonna are you gonna post like like you're gonna postpone the DLC but you're not gonna postpone like actual games like. I would rather them postpone actual games and postpone DLC. Yeah, like, like if you have all these ideas for DLC, like they never had to do this in the past. They never had to to release a game and then release a whole bunch of free DLC, trying to make it sound like it's a deal or something because they they're trying to. Uh, <laughs> that is a really uh, annoying extend. part of it, like the fact that they're trying to make it sound like a deal when it's really just like, this is the type of content that would have been in the base game in a world before updates. Yeah, now we're trying to artificially extend the how long this game is impact like impacts the you know 
pe how, how long people are playing this game, and they never had to do that in the past. Like, there's so many games that are that that are that are really well remembered now. Like, pretty much like all of Nintendo's library is well remembered now. Um, but they, and they never had to do any of these kind of like, you know, here's here's Wii Sports, but but we'll give you like, you're gonna have to wait in uh for for like a month for us to add bowling. Here's Animal Crossing, but you have to wait a month before you can talk to Tom Nook. Like, <laughs> that's gonna be the next Animal Crossing game. <laughs> you're just walking like, around in an empty field for the first month. I mean, I get that people still buy it and eat it up, but it's like, it's, it's getting to the point where I'm like, why am I going to buy a $60 game if I'm only getting half the experience? Yeah, I think I would have really preferred for Nintendo Switch Sports if they just released it, like, next summer, and it, like, yeah. came with golf and, like, fingers crossed, boxing. Yeah, that would have been perfect. It's so easy to get frustrated with Nintendo. <laughs> like, so easy. All right, let's move on to Pikmin Four. Uh, literally, just like a JPEG of of of, of what Pikmin, what, like like some gameplay of Pikmin Four. Um, I'm excited. I, I never got to play Pikmin Three, so um, I could easily get the deluxe. But now, you know, it's kind of like, well, I should just wait out for Pikmin Four. <laughs> yeah. I remember seeing in the comments someone said somewhere out there, a uh, a, a a blue furry puppet is excited, or like <laughs> yeah. like ha like sh had a scream of joy. Yeah, I, I have no connection to the Pikmin series, but all I could think of while watching that was like how <laughs> how excited Arlo was gonna be. I know. Uh, the shirt that uh, Shigeru Miyamoto was wearing was cool though. I'll oh take yeah. One. Um, but yeah, I, I I just I can't wait to see more about it once again on this whole uh I, i'm glad that we've moved on from uh well, i guess we haven't really moved on from i i love this new thing that game companies are doing where it's like look at the logo for the game or look at this look look at the number for this game <laughs> and we're not going to give you any kind of content about it or anything like with metroid prime 4 <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's just the four and like nothing since then. Yeah. <laughs> and it's weird to me. Like you would think that like they they would they would even like just some like pre-production. And I mean they used to do that back in the day. They 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 used to show like the the like the bare you know bare bones what was going on. Even like in, in some of the trailers, even before they were like you know, so to, to a point where they might have like a presentable like you know thing. You know, it, 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 there was more proof that people that, that that the companies were working on things. Like I get trying to keep it secretive, like you know, surprise or air of mystery, or try to keep hype up around it. But I think I feel like the best way to keep a pipe is to like talk about it. Yeah. Show us screenshots of some of the like, some of the like raw character models or like some of the raw uh, like texture concept arts and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't I just, know, just something more than the number four. I just imagine like the Nintendo Twitter account. They they put out a tweet that just has some like square grass texture, just PNG. They're like, hey, look, we're working on Pikmin Four. Right. <laughs> oh man. But uh, we complain about Nintendo a lot. This is one. This is a good thing Nintendo has done. Uh, a lot of people have been waiting uh, eternally for Pikmin 4, and uh, it seems like it's finally happening. Yeah, I don't know. Exciting. Maybe it'll maybe it'll get delayed like five times and then fall back into obscurity again. But <laughs> seems like it's finally happening. <laughs> I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> So now they just need to make good on some of these other games that they haven't touched in a while. Like F-Zero, or... Um, I, can, can, can we get a new Earthbound game, please? <laughs> What's a new Earthbound game? I also need... Um, I need a new Mario & Luigi game injected directly into my bloodstream. Anyways, we always find a way to like talk about literally anything else except for the topic. I mean, there wasn't really much about Pikmin 4 anyway, so you can't really blame us. <laughs> Try to stay right. on topic challenge. Literally impossible. <laughs> exactly. Um, and the next one is going to be even more impossible. We got Master Detective Archives. 
made by the same people that make Dog and Rampa. Um, Have you played any of those games? No. Okay, I'm not alone. Take me for a sociopath. <laughs> is that a thing? Huh. No. Who plays but... Dongan Rampa is a sociopath. No, a lot of the people in the community, though, as you can expect from an anime game where there's <laughs> high schoolers in a murder situation, things go very interesting. I mean that in a not interesting as in fascinating, interesting as in godless behavior. <laughs> Made in this behavior, if you will, absolutely smooth brain, terrifying. Wouldn't even want to go to that corner of the internet. Interesting. Um, I don't know. I, I've never been a fan of the Dog and Rampa series because, like I was saying before we started recording, I've always, I've never been a big fan of like the whole murder party concept thing. Yeah. Where it's like, oh my gosh, someone's dead. Let's find like, like I, I, okay, I like like murder mystery. And like mafia or uh i guess among us is a thing <laughs> um like that kind of style of like you know what what is it trouble in terrorist town like the, like those sorts of things i've always found those i've always liked those but there's always been something to me about like the anime like slightly comedic like but also like brutal styling that i, I just never i've just never liked it yeah so what's what's different about this that interests you? It doesn't seem like that. It seems like it, it, like I like the fact that like the it looks like like it reminds me of like Phoenix Wright, where like you go around and you like have to like you know check for clues and stuff like that. Obviously yeah. in a more open world space, um, and I kind of like the I didn't mean to hit my mic like that. I kind of like like the cyberpunk ish like futuristic city kind of thing and like the oh yeah all the neon lights and stuff the amnesiac storyline and like the the what are they called like the, the labyrinth the, the truth labyrinth or lab labyrinths or something like that oh yeah um and like you go through the you go through the labyrinth and it's like each path that you take is like ask a question correlating to evidence you might have found during your investigation and then like the bosses that you fight are like things that are trying to contradict your evidence or cover up the evidence or put t take you in the wrong direction and i kind of like how it's like a like a physical manifestation of that idea yeah and plus it doesn't take place in high school it looks like so <laughs> it's like the, that's the that was the problem with the danganronpa games just high school <laughs> High school yeah, and like, teenagers. Like, I think, and I think that's a part of it is like I've never liked I've never liked the teenage uh, murder party thing where it's like some teenager is going crazy and killing all these other teenagers. Like I've never liked that. I've always found it like why? <laughs> Grow up, man. Murders, <laughs> murders for losers. <laughs> no, it's just and, and a huge part of it is like then the community like. The communities around that sort of thing romanticize it and it's like, oh, yeah. gosh i wish i was with the killer and it's like <laughs> but you would be killed wouldn't you <laughs> but they're like no you know they would love me and i would love them and we would kill people together or i would i would enjoy them killing people or or like i would fix like him that. type thing yeah oh <laughs> that yeah that one i would fix him and it's just like why it's it's like a it's like it's a modern day version of like of, of like people being crazy about like murderers and serial killers back in like the 50s and 80s and stuff like that like it's just a modern day version of that and i've always i've always hated the idea of of romanticizing murderers i've never <laughs> it's always it's real always controversial like, take there i'm sure oh uh, yeah for, <laughs> for that for the for the report uh you know what, I'm just gonna say it. If you're in that corner of the internet, if you, if you're there and you're romanticizing murderers, I don't like you. Go away. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Don't talk to me. Don't seek psychiatric help. Go get a maiden. Uh, wh see, see what did I tell you? We did it again. Yeah, we went from anime mystery game to murderers. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think it's a game that I'm actually gonna like genuinely follow and probably buy, um, just as long as it doesn't fall into that trap of 
I mean, I'm sure I'm sure it's going to be like that. Just don't go online. Don't see what the fandom is like. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Just enjoy the game on your own and maybe watch Lock yourself who... in a cave. <laughs> Play the game. Exactly. Go to your attic with your with your everything and just stay there until you beat the game. <laughs> and then never watch any content about it online. You'll be and good. Don't tell, and don't tell anyone that you've played that game. In don't fact, let them know. That you've ever played that game. That will be your deepest, darkest secret. Yeah. So uh, next up is Story of Seasons, uh, which I think is cool because it's like the fir- it's the first game that I've seen personally. I'm sure there's been others. But it's the first game that I've seen where like, as the game progresses, not only do you get older, but um, the people around you get older. Like so much so, like they like you can like they visibly change, and like I think it creates for some really interesting situations where you know like maybe you know you're like oh I'm friends with this guy and he's like about my age and then like as you go older it's like wow this guy is like older than me and or not older than me but like you know now we're both old. Yeah. Um, and I like the fact that like if you have a kid like you know you have a spouse and you have a kid, then like the choices that you make with them determine the choices that they make in their life. <laughs> Oh, I was, I was, as I mentioned before, I was like extremely tired and mentally unwell while watching the direct. So when I was at that part, I was like, can you abuse your kid? Can you make him like a, can you make him grow up to be some (laughs) drug dealer or something? This, this, this dude was in dark thoughts mode. (laughs) He woke up this morning looking like that, uh, the concept art for Luigi from Luigi's Mansion a few years (laughs) ago. Yeah, the beta yeah, game over screen. Yeah, <laughs> flash that up on screen. Because that's what you looked like this morning. <laughs> Should have made but, that my profile picture for this. Seriously, live live footage of, of, of <laughs> Lugie at 6 o'clock this morning. Is there, like, um, do you die in that game? Like, can you get old enough to where question. you just <laughs> die? There's only See, a limited was, amount of time. That's what I was wondering, too. I was like, if there's characters that are older than you... And like as you age and they age, like do you have to attend their funerals? Uh, you're just like, stuck in this like endless to... cycle where all your friends and family die off. And... <laughs> oh, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Or like you die be, that, and then you that, start that... playing as your kid. Whoa, that'd be trippy. <laughs> that'd be really. I think that that would be a really interesting thing though. Like. I don't really know much about it, and now I kind of want to do some research on it, but, like... Yeah, the concept is, like, really interesting when you think about it. Like, that makes me want to get it even more, because it's, like... Oh, so it's a remake. Okay, I'm going to have to see that, because it's, like... It might not even be that in-depth. Like, maybe just your character model gets wrinkles and their hair turns gray, but... I, but I, I mean, know. like, could it's you in- imagine, like... It's interesting in theory. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, there's an NPC that runs a bakery, right? And, like, when you start off the game, he's older than you. And then as you age, he ages and then eventually passes. And, like, then the shop is handed over to, like, his son or his wife or something like that. And, like, like yeah. things about the shop change, like what's sold or the prices or stuff like that. Like, that's really interesting. Yeah, it's just that type of cool stuff that makes a game world feel, like, real and alive and reacting to stuff makes you feel the soul crushing sadness <laughs> you know my favorite some kids first experience with grief is going to be through story of seasons <laughs> <laughs> oh man um, but yeah actually I'm very interested in this game and I'm probably going to pick it up next we have Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Definitely picking this up. I've always wanted to play this uh, this game. This was the, the Wii too. one, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I've heard people online say this is a really good one. Oh yeah, it's got one of my favorite villains too. Freaking Magalor. Magalor is such a cool villain. Um, But... Now, now I'm noticing that we're working our way through a lot of deluxes because we just, I think we're done with what was on the Wii because we had uh, Epic Yarn Deluxe and now we have Return to Dreamland Deluxe. 
And I'm hoping that we just keep trucking forward because I'm going to need like... I'm going to need like a remake of Air Kirby's Air Ride. I'm going to need a remake of um, Mass Attack and Squeak Squad and Triple Deluxe and Planet Robobot and Canvas Curse and just all of them. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm more so I'm more so hoping that they get to the point where they actually get to the 3DS stuff because I would love to see rema uh, remastered versions of Triple Deluxe and Planet Robot because those are the two games that got that that got me started on Kirby. Oh, nice. And Planet Robobot is actually the first and only game that I've 100% percent percented. I was really hoping for some kind of new Donkey Kong game at this direct. Oh, please! So I, was, I need another Donkey Kong Country. You know, I guess I guess Donkey Kong doesn't get a have a new game, but Kirby gets his third this year. <laughs> it's fine. It's totally I fine. Even, I've been expecting them to do more Game and Watches. Like I thought, they, I, I thought for sure they were gonna do like a Kirby one. Uh, they were gonna do a Donkey Kong one. Donkey Kong one would, would have been rad. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about I like how they're adding a couple of new um, power-ups. One of them is not a new power-up. Um, the one that's the new is the Mecha one, and that one looks really cool. Although it's pretty much like the the the, the Robo Robo suit. I can't remember what it's called now. Is that from Planet Robobot? Yes. Um... Oh yeah, it was just called the ro the robot armor. Oh. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're done with Kirby. On to the main event. The main attraction, the moment you've all been waiting for. The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. I almost cried. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being dead serious. I started tearing up. The, did you take the title as an order? Yes. <laughs> I I really like sat there and teared up. Cause I don't know. I I was like I was so worried. I was like it's not gonna look good. It's not gonna be good. And then this t and this trailer came out and like he like skydives off the island and then the next scene is him like riding up the weird reverse stasis thing and there's like a yeah. massive like tempest behind him. And I was like, oh, this is gonna be good. No, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that it's gonna be good. Yeah, uh, I'm glad like, we finally would... have a release date too. Uh, it's like eight months away, something like that. But yeah, uh, I'm glad it exists at least. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad that it's farther away rather than closer. To be honest, um, because that means that it's you know I wouldn't even I'll be honest it would be frustrating, but I wouldn't even mind if it got delayed. Like <laughs> again, anything to make sure that it's 100% perfect. But right now it looks so good i'm so yeah. excited I'm yeah so i'm excited. excited like it's so it feels so good to genuinely say that <laughs> after so long like i am genuinely excited about tears of the kingdom i almost said breath of the wild too tears of the kingdom <laughs> we don't have to call it breath of the wild 2 anymore oh i know that's a celebration Momentous occasion. <laughs> oh it looks i'm so excited because it's like because it looks like it's going to center around the freaking, like, the mystery tribe that was floating around in uh, Breath of the Wild. The the Lome. Oh, yeah. And, like, that's going to be really cool. Plus, now it's, like, Hyrule. And also, the Sky Islands above Hyrule, wherever those came from. Yeah, I wonder, is it just going to be the same size as Breath of the Wild's map, but with all that extra space in the sky? Just Maybe. even more stuff? <laughs> I feel like this is, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like it's too much for my brain to be able to remember. <laughs> it's and too it looks big. Like, uh, and it, it's kind of also seeming like we might get some cave action, too. Oh yeah, there has been a few scenes with caves. And that's kind of what I wanted from Breath. I was like, I thought Breath of the Wild was great, but there was just it was just all surface stuff. Yeah. And I was like, there was there was just a point where I was like, I kind of wish I could go like underground. 
And like, I wish that there was like an underground dungeon or like an underground shrine or something, an underground, you know, boss to fight. Yeah, there were like a few tiny little caves, but they, yeah, there, there's a lot of potential with the underground and caves and everything. I don't know how much we're going to see of that in the sequel, but since they seem to be focusing on the sky mainly, but it would be cool to see more of that. And I hope that they do the uh, the expansion pass stuff again, because I thought that was cool. Oh, yeah. Which actually, that makes me wonder, is the expansion pass stuff just going to be part of the base game now? Or I guess it's a sequel, it's a, di it's a completely different thing, so it's like, probably not. Yeah, they'll, they'll probably just start. Because, I mean, uh, Majora's Masks, they kind of restart you. I mean, you keep some of the stuff you had in Ocarina of Time, but it's basically a restart. Yeah. Wait, what do you what do you think of the just the title, the Tears of the Kingdom? I think, I, I think it's raw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's definitely got more of a more emotion behind it than Breath of the Wild. Like it seems, it, it seems like the game is going to be darker than Breath of the Wild was. Which is it, 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 it's crazy because it's like, is that even possible? <laughs> I guess it is, huh? I was a, a little while ago. I was watching this video about Ocarina of Time, and like, a, there's this part where you're walking into the Shadow Temple for the first time, and they have this like message that pops up. That's like a Shadow Temple here is gathered Hyrule's bloody history of greed and hatred. <laughs> that's oh my oh. gosh, you want to? I, I wonder if uh... that's like. I don't know, I find that a really interesting concept, like focusing on the the royal family and like some sort of dark history behind them. You wanna talk about some darkness, you should look at the iconic canyon in Majora's Mask. I'm actually playing through Majora's Mask right now. <laughs> I guess I'll oh, see really? that when I get to it. <laughs> oh, then I won't spoil what it's about, but oh boy. But I thought it's interesting because uh, this game is kind of comparable to Majora's Mask with how it's a direct sequel to another game. Like, I know all the Zelda games supposedly connect on some sort of weird timeline with reincarnation and whatnot, but uh, this one's actually, like, takes place directly after, the net after another game. Mm -hmm. So... And with, the, with Majora's Mask, they made it, like, you know, Ocarina of Time focused on Ganondorf as the main antagonist, and then Majora's Mask had this, like, completely separate story with its own characters. I wonder if this game is going to have anything similar to that. That's a good question. I mean, it Have like we seen beautiful. anything? I mean, we had yeah, the weird, rather. like, uh, dehydrated Ganondorf. Yeah, and I, I, I bet you that's going to be a part of it. I think it'd be cool for it to focus on something else, though. Like, Tears of the Kingdom. I wonder if there's, like, some other sort of dark history of the kingdom that it's going to focus on. That's a really good question. Um, I'm hoping so. Um, especially now that we're going to see, like, the Lome tribe. Um, like, that's going to be really cool. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm excited for Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom. No See? more Breath of the Wild too. It, yeah, hard? it's like a, it's a reflex. I'm gonna have to unlearn it. But yeah, you have any other comments? Um, I want it more than life itself. And honestly, <laughs> I want to step into my own rejuvenation chamber and sleep until it comes out. Yeah. Yeah, she's really excited. Really, really excited. Um so uh, uh yeah, I guess we can we can call it a day. A evening rather. <laughs> um hope you guys enjoyed. 
I hope that you guys found our takes and commentary to be somewhat interesting uh, or relevant or tolerable. Something. Tolerable, yeah. <laughs> um, if I think you, that's the best we're going to get. If you are a person that romanticizes murder and partakes in dog and rampa, be ashamed of yourself. Partakes in dog and rampa. <laughs> like it's some ritual. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like it is, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I've, I've, obviously, I'm being satirical and joking. <laughs> I have to warn the thing about that now. No, I think we gotta go all in. Sensitive. We're taking a stand. We hate Danganronpa fans. If you're watching <laughs> this, go away from our channel. <laughs> Never come back. This is gonna come back to bite us in like 20 years. <laughs> when like the person, the, the like the top game company is the people that created Danganronpa or something. <laughs> Oh, it looks like about 20 years ago, <laughs> you guys, uh, you guys made fun of our game and made fun of our fans. So, uh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to execute you. We're gonna have to cancel you on life. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll see you folks later. Bye. Bye.